Hey, you know one of the topics we discuss in the gun community quite often, we do these little fantasy scenarios of if you had to survive on your own for a long term, what would be the best firearms to have? Now we do this based on, okay, what if the government collapsed due to civil unrest or natural disaster or pandemic? Now, usually these uh, scenarios seem quite fanciful, but maybe not quite as fanciful today as they seemed a year ago. Uh, luckily, the pandemic we're facing right now is very mild, and you are not going to die from it, most likely. You've got like a 99.9% .9 chance you are not going to die from this pandemic, and I don't believe society is going to collapse, so don't panic. Uh, this is mild, like I said, but it does bring up the topic of what would be the best five firearms to have on hand in case we ever did face a long-term slash pandemic situation where we couldn't depend on grocery stores or society or government or anything like that. So I wanted to go ahead today and address that list, make my own list and let you know what I think are the top five firearms you should have to be prepared for a long-term survival situation or a pandemic. All right, at number five on the list is something a lot of people might not expect, and that is a concealable handgun. Now, I would personally go with a revolver, but a lot of people will choose a semi-automatic, and that's fine. Uh, now, a lot of people will say, well, what role is a concealable firearm going to be playing in a pandemic or without the rule of law situation, since most people aren't going to need to conceal their firearm? Well, you're still going to want to be able to conceal a firearm. There's going to be a lot of times you are interacting with other people, be it for trade or just information or whatever, where you're not going to want to be obviously armed. You're not going to want to be a target and you're not going to want to seem like an aggressor, but you're still going to want to have an advantage and an ability to defend yourself. That's where a concealable firearm comes into play. So that's why it's number five on my list. All right, at number four is a battle rifle, be it an AK, an AR, or whatever you choose. You're going to want to hunker down in a bad situation like this. You're going to want to be able to maintain your homestead if you can. You're not going to want to be out and be on the move, so you're going to need something to defend that homestead. So what you're going to want for you, and possibly every person in your family if you can, but what you're going to want is something that you can use as a defensive rifle and an offensive rifle if absolutely necessary. And that's why number four on the list is a battle rifle. All right, at number three on the list is a good old 12 gauge shotgun. Now, a lot of people might want to get a semi-automatic shotgun, but I suggest a pump shotgun. I just find that they are more reliable if you're using things like birdshot, etc., in them that are a little bit lighter loads. Uh, if you use a semi-automatic, you might run into problems with that. And one of the reasons I don't want to run into that problem is I'm not just going to stock buckshot and slugs for this to use it as an offensive weapon, as a powerhouse weapon. I'm also going to stock a lot of birdshot. Keep a lot of birdshot around because in a bad situation, not only will your shotgun be great at defending your property, defending yourself, taking down large predators, and taking down large game, it'll also be your go-to gun for taking down things like duck and quail and maybe even pigeons if you live in the city. So make sure you have a good shotgun, preferably a pump shotgun, and make sure you have a wide array of ammo for that shotgun. All right, number two on the list is a good hunting rifle. You're gonna be defending your property and your life every now and then, but you're gonna to have to eat every day. So you're gonna want a rifle that is solely centered on providing meat for your table. That's why you need a hunting rifle. It gives you that advantage of taking down large game from a distance with more accuracy than a shotgun and more range. This is something that will help feed your family. And in a pinch, it could actually double as a sniper gun if you have to defend those property lines from a distance. So a good scoped hunting rifle is number two. All right, and number one on the list is along the same lines as number two, but on a smaller scale. It's a good 22 caliber rifle. This will also be great for hunting. If you live in a more rural area or you don't have a lot of large game in your area, you're gonna to have to center on smaller game like rabbits, maybe even possums, squirrels, etc. And you're gonna need a nice little 22. You're not gonna to wanna to blow the carcass up with a 308 or something. You're gonna to wanna to take down that small animal reliably, effectively, efficiently with a good 22 rifle. 
This will be a great hunting rifle in a bad situation, especially in a city environment. So a 22 should never be underestimated. In fact, I think it's one of the most important rifles to have in a long-term survival situation because you're going to find rabbits, squirrels, raccoons, possums, things you can eat that are plentiful and easily found and you're going to be able to take them out with a 22 and also a 22 can be quite uh, persuasive at close range if you're defending your property a uh, 22 round out of this longer barrel into the face of a person coming in your window is going to really dissuade them so like i said uh, all those reasons put together is why i think the 22 caliber rifle is the number one item you need for a long-term survival situation or pandemic Hey, this is the Yankee Marshal just reminding everyone out there that if you disagree with anything I say in any one of my videos, be it something political or tactical, I am going to give you the opportunity to come talk to me face to face instead of just having to put stuff in comment sections where someone might not even read them. You can come in one of my live chats and tell me off in person. You just have to send an email to shootingleftofcenter at gmail.com and in the subject line of that video put slap the yank and then I will get back with you and set up a time where you can come in one of the live chats and tell me off face to face.